GPIO, the most basic peripheral in microcontrollers. GPIO stands for General Purpose Input and Output, a universal interface between the microcontroller and the outside world. Being general purpose means that, in theory, any type of digital communication can be implemented. In practice, most advanced communications are done with dedicated peripherals. But still, widely used for simple devices, or as a desperate last resort for complex interfaces. GPIOs are digital interfaces and distinguish two signal states, high and low. Low is zero volt or ground. High is the system supply voltage, usually 5 volt or 3.3 volts. Surprisingly, many devices can be used with these simple signals, buttons, switches, relays, and most communication interfaces use binary signals. GPIO pins usually act like three state devices, meaning they have three states. This may seem conflicting with the previous mentioned two, but let me explain. A pin is usually used as an input or output. If a pin is an input, the state of the voltage of the pin relies on the external environment, like a sensor's output. We will measure an analog voltage with this Arduino in this example. The voltage can be anything between 5 volt or 0 volt in this case, but the input can still only be either high or low. We just told it not to enforce a voltage level by setting it to an input pin. This is the high Z, high impedance state. If a pin is an output pin, we want to drive the pin to a voltage, high or low. That's how we have the three states for a three-state device. Input, output high and output low. But this is just an act. A GPIO pin is much more complex under the hood. It can be an output and read back the actual state at the same time and do much more advanced stuff. Like in this example, we simultaneously read the digital input and measured the voltage with the built-in analog to digital converter or ADC. Labeling it as a simple three-state device is rude, but we only use them as a three-state device in most cases. The I in GPIO means input. GPIO pins can be set into high impedance, high Z. In this mode, the pin must be driven by an external signal. Some peripherals, like simple switches, can only enforce one signal level, either high or low, but not both. High impedance inputs left floating will collect noise, so some biasing must be implemented to ensure proper operation. Connecting the pin directly to the supply voltage or ground is dangerous, so a resistor with high value is used, usually over 10 kilo ohms. External pool resistors can be used, but most microcontrollers have internal pool resistors. I have a short video explaining this topic, check it out, I will put a link in the description. Some older devices have only pull-up resistors, meanwhile modern microcontrollers have both resistors available. These can be turned on even when the pin is set as an input, therefore a single button connected to the ground is usually enough. When the button is not pressed, the pin will be pulled to high, and when the button is pressed, the button drives the voltage to ground, and the pull resistor limits the current. If you use just the wire with negligible resistance, it would pull the pin to high, but would cause a short circuit when the button is pressed. As an input, you will need to know the state of the pin. Well, that's the goal of an input. Get information from the world one bit at a time. You can sit there and ask the GPA repeatedly all day long if something happened. This is the so-called polling mode. It's not only inefficient, inaccurate, but you may still miss a change or two if you are busy doing other work or if the signal changes fast. It would be nice to outsource this easy but important job. This is where interrupts come in. We can set an interrupt to some or all pins and it signals the CPU when the selected event happens, eliminating the need of checking the state. When an interrupt happens, the CPU can put all other jobs aside and focus on handling a time-critical event, then it continues executing the previous program where it left. We can even put the CPU to sleep mode to conserve energy, because the interrupt events can wake the CPU. Interrupt events can be high to low transitions, also known as falling edge, or low to high, rising edge, or even both. It can be also level sensitive, not just edge sensitive, but edge triggered interrupts are more common. The O in GPIO means output. The goal is an output to provide digital signals. Two methods are common, push-pull and open-drain. In push-pull mode, the output can be driven to both supply voltage and ground. This is more universal and can drive more things, but avoid connecting two push-pull outputs directly because they can cause a short circuit. 
An open drain output is simpler, limited, but has several advantages. Open drain can only drive the output to ground, just like the previous button example, and this is a huge limitation. However, several open drain outputs can be connected together without an issue. If at least one drives the line to low, it will be low. No short circuit happens if other open drain outputs want high. This is used, for example, in the I2C bus. Also, a different voltage can be used. For example, a microcontroller may operate at 33 volts, but if the GPIO pin is well prepared, it can tolerate the Limbus, which is normally pulled to 12 volts. One more thing. Microcontrollers don't like too much current. They like low power signals. The current is limited per pin, port and package too. For example, an Arduino Uno shall never exceed 20 mA per pin and 200 mA per microcontroller. Open drain outputs can usually handle a bit more current than push pulls, but as a general advice, never drive anything more than a single LED per pin and use power electronics to drive external things like a motor. Even powerful FETs need gate drivers. We talked about the old common features, now let's look into the current ones. Modern microcontrollers can have some exciting features. But these are not universal, you may easily find a device without any of these features. We're gonna talk about them to get an overview of possibilities. One interesting feature is tolerating higher voltages. Microcontrollers designed for 3.3 volts usually don't like 5 volt signals. To be precise, exceeding the absolute maximum voltage can fry the GPIO pins or even worse. Overloading can kill the whole microcontroller. However, some or all IO pins may tolerate high voltages. The ADUC7034 tolerates even 18 volts. Of course, a device running at 3.3 volts can drive the output to this high level. They just don't die if these voltages are applied. When we want to set or clear some pins, it's common to read back the output controlling register, mask and set manually, then write back. Dedicated set and clear registers can do this job in a single step. When we talked about open drain and push-pull outputs, we assume that only one of these is available. You may select from both modes. Outputs can be also configured in various ways. The slew rate may be configured. The slew rate is how fast the voltage can change. Some microcontrollers, like the Tiva on the Tiva launchpad, can limit drive strength, practically the output current. I hope now you understand the job of GPIOs and thank all the sweet Patreon supporters for their support. If you like content like this, share and consider supporting my channel. Thank you and keep on learning.